Okay, we have something interesting here today. On the top of the board, we've got the Wallace product. I briefly derived this a while back relating it to Wallace's integral. Today, we're gonna to do something different. We'll derive it from the sine product formula I have over here. So to get started with it, the first thing I wanna do is, I don't really want that X there. I'm gonna to try to, you know, we have a product. We're trying to get it back looking like this. So let's just divide off the X, dividing an X on both sides. This way we can cancel off the X right here. And then I want to evaluate X at this value we want, pi over two. So what we're looking at is, we're just gonna to wanna to get the value for sine pi over two over pi over two, just plugging into this, where this pi is not this pi. The big pi, the big pi stands for the product. I should have on here an n, so this is n equals one to infinity. And then plugging in pi over two, this is gonna become pi squared. Let's take the two when we square it into the denominator here. I coined it as two squared, n squared, pi squared. Then we can simplify sine at pi over two. That's just gonna be a one. So we can just flip this and write the left side as two over pi. Over here, pi squareds are gonna cancel, leaving a one in the numerator. So then on the right side, to simplify this thing, Let's get a common denominator so I can write this as, yeah, let's change that to a four. So I'll write it as four n squared over four n squared minus one over four n squared. But then I can bring this together with the common denominator. So what's gonna happen is, let me get rid of this. I can write this now as four n squared minus one all over four n squared. And at this point, we're pretty close, but let's get it looking more like this. If I flip this, we have our pi over two. So let's take the reciprocal of everything. Don't worry about that. So take the reciprocal here. We have pi over two equal to here. You know, with the product, we can just flip it with the sum. You can't do that. But if you think about just multiplying all these terms, then we can just flip each one. So what's gonna happen? We have now the product. The numerator becomes four n squared over four n squared minus one. But then from here, we can just factor this as difference of two squares. So I can write it as 2n plus one times 2n minus one. And 4n squared, we can write it as 2n times 2n. And really you can express this quite a few different ways. We could have left it like this. And actually, let me actually clean it up a little bit because I think it's actually nicer maybe to write it as 2n minus one times 2n plus one. And then we'll just have the 2n times 2n here. And that's really all there is to it. The reason I switched the order is just so when you're expanding out terms, so you're kind of always increasing in the denominator. And actually, let's look at a few terms and see what this looks like. Okay, now here we see the pattern with it expanded out like this. And then now we have it. I switched the sign here so that we have it so we're kind of increasing in the denominator. I think in one of the videos I did, we had it where n was not infinite. Maybe it was like, say, 2024 or something like that. And then you have this kind of double factorial thing going on where it's like, if n is finite, we can write it like this, but we have it duplicated. So like this was squared and then it was over something like 2n plus one double factorial times 2n minus one double factorial. Again, probably doesn't make sense to write it this way when we're going to infinity, but it's kind of nice if you've got large a large n value in this pattern, you can estimate it as pi over two. And yeah, so basically that's all there is to it. When you get something in this pattern, just know it's Wallace product and it's pi over two. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.